Linda? You know it's my wedding tomorrow, right? I heard that you were working today. Just what are you thinking? Are you even preparing for tomorrow? Don't embarrass me at the wedding, all right? Good morning, Jenny. It's not like I'm going to host the wedding or anything, so it shouldn't be strange that I'm working today. I already have the bare minimum prepared, and the wedding's only a short walk from where I live. I should be fine as long as there's no emergency. You sure about that? Why are you even working on a Saturday? Are you that slow at work? <laughs> I always go to work on Saturdays. Huh? Salons in this area are closed on Tuesdays. You go to one at least once a month, right? You should know this. The salon I run also has days off on Tuesdays. That's why I'm working today. You are a hairstyler, Linda. Yes. And you run a salon? Yeah, didn't I tell you? Oh, I see. The customer is going to come soon, so bye. Hey, why are you not here? Linda? The wedding's about to start! I asked you to take care of the reception, right? I had a friend who came early to do it instead since you weren't here. You need to make sure your wedding gift is a hefty sum to make up for this, all right? Huh? We just got news that you were in an accident and were brought to the hospital. You just ruined my wedding! I noticed that my brother wasn't here as well, and apparently he went to the hospital to check in on you. You don't want to come to my wedding that much, huh? Can you not do anything that will stand out on my special day? I won't just let you cancel on me, obviously. It's fine if you're late. Just get here with my brother as soon as they're done with you over there. Hey! You're still not here! The feast is about to start! My brother's there as well, right? You're making a mess of my wedding. If you don't come, pay me $30,000 for your wedding gift, all right? Oh, $30,000? Oh, finally you replied. If you're going to pay $30,000, then it's fine if you don't come. <laughs> There's no taking it back, all right? Pay me the money. The wedding was stopped midway because of you. My fiancé is even threatening to break off the engagement. What are you going to do about this? If you feel even a tiny bit guilty, then pay me $30,000. Jenny, will you stop texting Linda? Oh, Thomas! Why didn't you come to the wedding? I know you were worried about your wife, but couldn't you have returned to the wedding after checking in on her for a little bit? You were probably stopped by Linda, right? But you have to be tough and refuse at times like that. It was your adorable sister's special day after all. This was probably one of the reasons the wedding was cancelled. Linda only thinks about herself. Jenny, didn't you hear from Mom what happened to Linda? Huh? Didn't you hear she got an accident with? Um... I think she did say something, but I was too shocked the wedding was cancelled to have heard. And I'm currently locking myself into my room to show that I don't want the engagement to be broken off. My happiness and my future are on the line right now. Who cares about all that? We can think about it after I get married. So you don't even understand why the wedding was cancelled and why our engagement is going to be broken off? But there's no reason for such terrible things to happen to me. Just listening to it is a waste of time. I don't know if you've given up and accepted the situation or if you just really don't get it. What? The reason our wedding was cancelled and your engagement is about to be broken off is because the driver who bumped into Linda is a guy you're cheating on your fiancé with! Huh? Apparently he heard about your wedding just this morning and drove straight to the wedding venue. He was in a hurry and ignored the traffic lights, which is when he ran into Linda crossing the street. What? 
Uh, probably that's the explanation he gave. Seriously? Um, Linda's... The accident happened right after I went home because I'd forgot something and returned to the wedding. Thankfully, she'll live, but she had to be hospitalized since the injury was pretty serious. It was that bad? But she replied to my text about the $30,000. That was me. Huh? Her phone didn't break in the accident. I decided to hold on to it for her, but your messages were so annoying that I replied just to shut you up. What's your problem? So you're going to pay the $30,000 for her? $30,000? Who said I would be paying? Nothing in my reply implied that I would be paying 30000 What? Besides, no matter how long you lock yourself in your room, you can't stop the engagement being broken up anymore. You have no right to refuse now that everyone knows you were cheating. Uh, but... Also, I have no idea how the wedding being ruined is Linda's fault. She's a victim here, not you. Why? Because if you hadn't cheated, then this guy wouldn't have rushed to the wedding and hit Linda with his car. Uh, I'll be at the hospital taking care of Linda for the time being. So I don't have time to take part in this mess you've made. Um, Thomas? Don't text me. Why? I don't want to talk to you. Don't come to my house either. I don't want to see your face. Linda! You're better now, right? Why don't you reply to my texts? If you can't just read them, all right? Lend me $50,000 as soon as possible. There's an ATM at that hospital, right? I'll tell you my bank account, so just deposit it there. Oh, and don't tell Thomas, okay? He won't approve if he finds out. Hey, Jenny! What? Thomas? It's been a while since we talked. What is it? Didn't I tell you not to message Linda? Uh, what? She told you? I noticed she was getting notifications. Linda still can't move her right hand. Um... I was just on her phone sending replies to text for her since she couldn't type. Which is when I noticed your ridiculous text. The timing... You really don't give up, do you? The $50,000 is the total amount of money you need to pay, right? The cost of the wedding, plus the fine you had to pay for cheating on your fiancé. You were even asking for $30,000 as a wedding gift last time. Linda owns her own salon, right? That must mean she makes a lot of money. So $50,000 should be fine for her. I'm saying that there's no reason for her to give you any money. Just who do you think you are? But... Who do you think is to blame for my engagement being broken off? You, who cheated even though you're about to get married. Who else is to blame? If Linda didn't get into an accident that day... She only got into an accident because you cheated, remember? Stop trying to put the blame on others and act as if you did nothing wrong! Then you pay me $50,000. What? Isn't it the older brother's job to help out his younger sister? I said, stop acting as if you did nothing wrong. I'm just asking you to lend me some money because I don't have any. Why, oh, you. The guy you were cheating on your fiancé with admitted his mistakes and is ready to pay for it. Huh? What do you mean? He promised to pay the fine your former fiancé is asking from him. He's also going to pay for Linda's hospitalization fees and a loss of salary while she's unable to work. Quite different from you. Um, does that mean he'll probably pay me the 50000 for me if I ask him, right? Oh my god, I should have asked him from the start. <laughs> you probably won't be able to contact him anymore. What? The lawyer who mediated for us said he had a change of heart and quit his job to go back to his hometown. What? Apparently he sent you a farewell message or email of some sort. Uh... You didn't look at it yet? Oh, I, I was blocking him. What, you blocked him? I heard he was coming to barge into the wedding. 
I got mad at him for trying to ruin my happiness, so I blocked him out of spite. I haven't unblocked him since. I see. Well, that's it, really. Mum and Dad probably already told you, but you should take responsibility of your own actions. But... It's $50,000! How am I supposed to make that much money? Don't ask me. I don't have the money! It's not my problem. Bye! Thomas! Her parents paid for the $50,000 Jenny was being fined for. But they told her that she would have to give it back. Jenny kept complaining about how she wouldn't be able to give it back and locked herself in her room. If you don't have any money, then work, shouted her dad. He didn't tolerate Jenny's nonsense and got her a job at a nearby factory. She uses the salary she earns there to pay her debt little by little. By the way, Mum is the one who manages her salary. Jenny works hard labor day and night, and never does she stop crying about it. She doesn't know that her parents will cut ties with her as soon as she pays back the money. Hey you! What kind of mother are you? Seriously? This is just unbelievable! You've completely failed as a mother! Excuse me? Who is this? I have no idea why I am being confronted like this. You must have the wrong person. Please be more careful when sending messages next time. Wow! Wrong person? Don't you think you need to apologize to me first? I'm pretty sure I've got the right person. Just look at how you've raised your son. My son? I don't have a son. Yes, you do. Stop lying. Do you think you can get away with acting dumb? I'm Julia. I'm your son's girlfriend. What? Well, technically, I'm his ex-girlfriend, though. I've been through a lot because of your son. And it's all because of how you raised him. Ex-girlfriend? What are you talking about? Do you still think I got the wrong number? I used to date your son, George. Don't tell me you don't know your own son's name. What? George's ex-girlfriend? Hold on. You are a lady? Obviously! That's so rude! You're just as much of a scum as your son. Um, did George do something to you? Yes, he did. He did something terrible to me. He betrayed me. I was deceived into a marriage scam by George. Marriage scam? Your son dwindled me out of $300,000 in a marriage scam. My son did that? $300,000? Yes, he did. When I confronted him about it, he said he'd been taught since childhood to extort money from women. According to him, everything he did was on his mother's orders, so it wasn't his fault. He also mentioned that he always felt guilty. What? He said that to you? Yes. And I have it recorded on a voice recorder. Wow, I'd love to hear that. No way. I'm keeping this as evidence. I can't trust what you might do with it. If I give this to the police, you and your son will both go to jail for marriage scam. You wouldn't like that, right? That's why I want you to take responsibility. Responsibility? Yes, for what you've done. What do you mean? Repay the $300,000 now. I'll consider that a settlement money. Also, since I'm pregnant, take responsibility and pay child support. You're pregnant with George? You're kidding, right? This is no joke! Why would I make a joke about it? George promised to marry me. I trusted him and loved him, so I lent him $300,000. And yet, when I told him about the pregnancy, 
He said he had no intention of marrying me and ran away. I bet he's hiding in your house right now, isn't he? Well, he's here in my house. See? I knew it. So that confirms that you two are accomplices in the crime. I will never forgive you and your son. Enjoy your peace while it lasts. Because once I submit this evidence to the police, it's over for you. Is that so? Well, go ahead and do as you please. Oh, really? You're trying to make me lower my guard and steal the voice recorder, aren't you? Or maybe you're thinking of blackmailing me. But I'm not afraid of you. Justice will prevail. What are you talking about? You two are filthy, despicable criminals. You'd take any terrifying means to avoid getting caught by the police, right? I know what you're thinking. I'm just taking righteous action against a scammer. I'm offering to settle things out of court. I'll drop the marriage scam charges if you return the $300,000. I'll get rid of the evidence too. Also, I'll raise the child by myself. So please pay child support to me. It's that easy, you know. Think carefully about whether you'd prefer to go to jail with your son or pay $300,000 in child support. You're contradicting yourself in so many ways, aren't you? Whatever. Just do whatever you want. Please submit that so-called evidence to the police. Are you sure about that? Anyway, I'll make sure you and George take full responsibility. Repay the $300,000 in child support. Anything else is non-negotiable. I see. I'm pretty sure there's a misunderstanding. Please give me some time to talk to my husband first. There's no way I'm wrong, but whatever. If your husband found out that his son was a filthy marriage scammer who exploited people for money, I don't know what would happen to you, you know? You're fine with stealing from others, but desperate to save yourself, huh? <laughs> you are indeed a vile criminal. If everything you say is a lie, then you're the one committing fraud. It's not a lie, so it doesn't matter. Just give me $300,000 in child support. Hey, honey, are you done with your work? Not yet. I have to finish writing a report about my business trip today. I can't wait to go back home, honey. Me too. I know you are busy, but there's something I need to talk to you about. What's wrong? I got a weird message from someone today. According to that person, George was involved in a marriage scam. And now, the woman he conned out of $300,000 is pregnant. What? George did that? And the woman is pregnant? What the hell is going on? She said her name was Julia and claimed that she was George's ex-girlfriend. According to her, I instructed George to take the money. So she's demanding compensation and child support. Did you agree to pay? Of course not. I thought so. It's probably just a prank. Don't take it seriously. George wouldn't do something like that anyway. Or maybe... There's been some misunderstanding. I also think there might be some misunderstanding. She even said that she has a voice recorder with George's confession recorded on it. She's all fired up to take it to the police and file a complaint. I find it hard to believe that she'd be so confident with a bold lie like that. I don't know. Some people do, don't they? There's no way our son would do such a thing. It's obviously a lie. Maybe that person, Julia, is the scammer? Maybe. But the fact that she knew my contact information scares me. I don't recognize the name Julia. Is my personal information leaked to scammers? Do you know any woman named Julia? 
Nope. I don't think I knew anyone by that name either. I see. I don't know what to do now. If she's really a scammer, she might be using a fake name. Anyway, I'll be back home tomorrow. You know, it might be a good idea to take George and stay somewhere safe tonight. You're right. Julia might know our address, so I'll contact my parents and have Dad come pick us up. Yeah, that's a good idea. Also, it might be best not to reply until we figure out how she got your number. If anything happens, you should report it to the police immediately. Just be careful, okay? Okay, I will. I'll get ready to leave right away. Good. If anything happens, let me know right away. I will. I'll let you know when I arrive at my parents' house. Okay, take care. Where's the $300,000 in child support? Did your husband leave you because he found out you were a scammer? Don't tell me you don't have money to pay me. Even if that's the case, it's your own fault. I won't forgive you until I get the money. Look. Look how big my belly has gotten. Do you realize that my baby is your grandchild? Raising your son to be a scammer and taking money from him? What kind of mother are you? Pay up the $300,000 in child support now. If you don't pay today, I'll submit the evidence to the police. If that happens, both you and George will end up in jail. If you don't want that, just pay me now. Doesn't it look familiar? Wait. No way. It's crazy, right? Maybe we can find out who this person is. Yeah. Maybe we can find out who she's referring to about George. Yeah, you're right. I'll ask around on my way home from work. Thank you. Please be careful, honey. I will. See you soon. Hi, Julia. Finally, you replied. Oh, well, I already filed a complaint for marriage scam. I'll make your son take responsibility. Let me tell you something. George is a cat. What? I should have clarified that sooner. But it's your fault for not checking the fact too, you know? Oh, what do you mean? You got my contact information from one of the regulars at the bar, right? How did you know? I recognized the location in the photo you sent. It was taken at the bar my husband and I frequent. You're Julia Davis, an employee at that bar. How did you know my full name too? I explained the situation to the manager of the bar, and he told me. Then I checked with the person who gave you my contact information. Apparently, you told that person that George caused trouble with a young lady. Actually, he asked me if I had heard from you. I corrected him, saying that George is a house cat. So, of course, he didn't cause any trouble with a lady. Are you kidding? A cat? But I heard you were bragging about buying a new house for George. And you even bought him a condo. Do you mean a $100 cat condo? <laughs> Stop lying. You said George was your family, your son. I heard you guys happily chatting at the bar. George is a male cat, so... For my husband and me who don't have children... He's our precious son. What the hell? So George is really... A cat. Oh my god. I wanted to meet George, so I worked at the bar to gather information. I overheard conversations about a house and a condo for George. And since it sounded like it was from a wealthy family, I was sure it was George I was looking for. 
I see. So, it's all your misunderstanding. Oh my god, it can't be true! The George you mentioned is your college friend, right? He comes from a wealthy family. Yes, you know him? I heard it from the manager. Apparently, George got a job at an overseas company five years ago. And he hasn't returned since then. I heard that you shared that story with the manager. It's obvious that you couldn't be pregnant with this child. So what were you thinking with all these marriage scams and pregnancy claims? Damn it! Yeah, you're right! It's all a lie! I knew it. It's all George's fault! When we were in college, no matter how much I confessed my feelings to him, he wouldn't take me seriously. And to make matters worse, he started dating another girl. He went abroad without telling me anything, and he hasn't contacted me since. Don't you think that's terrible? Well, it's hard for me to judge because I don't know anything about it. I hated him so much for looking down on me. I heard about his family living in this town, so I moved here to seek revenge. If I couldn't have George himself, I thought I could at least extort money from George's parents and feel better. And yet, I can't believe all the stories that I heard were about a cat. I had no idea that it was actually about a completely different George. Expecting people to believe in a pregnancy or marriage scam involving someone they haven't seen for years? Why would you even think they'd believe you? I thought it would work if I had evidence. The recorded proof that his mother threatened him and committed marriage scam. But that's fabricated, right? You ask somebody to make a fake voice record and the pregnancy was a complete lie too. You got help from your co-workers, stuffed padding into your clothes to make you look pregnant, and then took a photo, right? Your manager saw everything. I showed him the photo that you sent me. He mentioned he always thought you were a bit odd, but he never imagined you'd commit a crime. He also said he's going to fire you. What? Why? I didn't commit any crimes. You misused customers' personal information, threatened them, and slandered them. Furthermore, you fabricated evidence about George. I've filed a police report, and I'm sure the police will be on their way soon. You might not face criminal charges, but... But at the very least, you'll be forced to leave the bar. Abusing customers' personal information is the biggest taboo in the service industry. Why would you do such a terrible thing? I'm a victim hurt by George. I have a right to revenge, don't I? This time, I just made a mistake about the target. Please make your excuses to the police. No, don't report it, please. Just explain that it was a misunderstanding to the police. We have your photo, testimonies from people at the bar, and screenshots of our conversation. You can't just say it was a misunderstanding. You should have been more careful with handling personal information before thinking about revenge. Julia was arrested by the police and, during interrogation, it emerged that she had committed several other crimes in addition to our case. She had been stalking a married man resembling George among the bar customers and was also embezzling money from the cash register. Since the offenses came to light, she ended up in jail. The bar owner and Julia's parents offered us apologies, and the matter was resolved. Nevertheless, out of caution, we decided to relocate. We had been considering moving to a larger house for George's benefit, so it worked out well. George is lounging around today without the care of the world about our human drama. Watching him like that puts my mind at ease.